Shalom Aleichem. My name is Tony Pino, and today we are going to have a teaching concerning a question that arose after my series, The Ten Reasons Why Yeshua Did Not Die on a Wednesday or a Thursday. The question is, what about the women who prepared spices, bought spices, took spices to the tomb of Yeshua? Don't those passages, when we look at them, prove that Yeshua died on a Wednesday or a Thursday? And my answer to them is, no, it does not. It actually proves a Friday crucifixion. Amen. And so I would encourage you first to go ahead and watch the video series that I did on the 10 reasons why Yeshua did not die on a Wednesday or a Thursday. This will help lay the foundation on my approach to these passages that we're going to talk about today concerning the spices. Amen. And so before we go to those passages, Let's go ahead and go and look at the chart that I have in the video series so I can explain a couple things so you can see my perspective on where I am at approaching these other passages concerning the women with the spices. Amen. Sorry. Right, let's go to the chart. All right. Here is the chart that I use in the video series. And again, I encourage you to watch that video series because I do a lot more deeper explanation than what we're going to give here. I'm just going to quickly run through this so we can get to the other passages. Amen. So as I proved in the video series, the term on the third day, which is the day that Yeshua was prophesied to rise from the dead. Okay. I proved that any portion of a day is counted as a whole, according to the scriptures and how they count days in that time. And so uh, I also proved that three days and three nights was not something you took literally, but it just was symbolic or metaphorically or an expression, a Jewish expression concerning just speaking of three days. Okay. And, you know, of course, Luke 24 verse 21 helped to prove that also where it was the third day since the events had occurred. It's stated there, which we were already talking about the first day of the week in Luke 24. So when you go backwards three days, you've got what Sunday, first day of the week, that's day one. Then you got Shabbat is day two and Friday is the crucifixion, according to Luke chapter 24, verse 21. Now, if you believe in a Wednesday crucifixion and he rises on the third day. All right. So we have day four for Wednesday. OK, he dies that day. That is day one. OK, for them, that is Nisan 14. Then you have day two, which is day five of the week, okay? And then you have him rising on day six of the week, which is Friday. That would be Nisan 16, okay? Nowhere in scripture, and nobody believes that he rose on a Friday, right? He rose on the first day of the week, again, according to Luke 24, verse 21. And so, yes, a Wednesday crucifixion is not possible. A lot of people like like the Wednesday crucifixion, because they say Nisan 14, that's when the lambs were slaughtered and Yeshua is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is our Pesach lamb, all of that. But you know what? There's no prophecy that he would die at that exact moment. Yeshua represents all of the offerings, even the Yom HaKippurim offerings. Okay. And so he's not going to come back and die during those times either. He represents them all. So those are all just symbolic terms of Yeshua. He is our Pesach lamb, symbolically. This is not a prophecy that he has to die during that time, but people try to force fit that in there, okay? And so, no, that's not going to work either. Not to mention that Yeshua actually ate a Pesach meal, okay? The lamb was on the table from the temple. So he, what? He is still alive on Nisan 14, and I prove that in the video series. When we go through the passages, some people like to say he didn't eat a Seder meal or, oh, he didn't eat that one because, you know, he said, I won't eat of this fruit of the vine and, you know, to partake of this meal. And I'm kind of paraphrasing here until, you know, you all come into my kingdom and basically until the kingdom comes or I return. And again, they're misreading the scriptures. When you look at all the passages together, he ate the Seder meal. And then, yes, from that time on, he will not eat again until his kingdom comes. So it was an actual Seder meal, which means it has to be at least Nisan 15 at that time because he's eating the meal. So he does die on Nisan 15. Okay. 
And this again, disproves a Thursday crucifixion because they wanna say on Thursday of that year, it was Nisan 14, okay? And so everyone gets really heavily stuck on the three days and three nights. And I proved to you that that was not only used symbolically and, and not literally, but also it wasn't the true sign of Yona that Yeshua was speaking of. The sign of Yona, the only sign that they were going to be given was the preaching of repentance that Yeshua did for three and a half years. And we saw that in the passages of Luke, when you look at the sign of Yona and what Yeshua says. And so, yes, this is my foundation, all right? Also the day or the term preparation, preparation day, okay? In the Bible means Friday, okay? It's actually also the Greek word for Friday. And so, yes, when you see the term preparation day, we're going to see it flows that it was Friday. Some people try to say, oh, no, that's the preparation day before a festival Shabbat, because Nisan 15, which is the first day of unleavened bread, was a Shabbat rest. So that's another reason why they keep trying to point towards Nisan 14. But again, the scriptures are going to support a Friday for the preparation day, not a preparation day before the festival Shabbat. Okay. Because again, Yeshua didn't die when the lambs were being slaughtered. Okay. He was eating an actual Pesach meal. And so I go through all that in the video series in more detail. We don't have time for all that, but continually a Wednesday and a Thursday crucifixion just do not work. And we're going to continue to look at it now through the passages of the spices that the women prepare and bring to the tomb. Let's go ahead and go to the scriptures now. All right, real quickly, one more thing before hitting those passages. Some people will say, well, the, the priesthood would never put Yeshua to death on a Shabbat, on a holy day. Yes, they would. The entire, the entire so-called trial was an illegal trial that night. Okay? They were breaking Jewish law. They were breaking Torah commands every step of the way. Okay? They were determined to get Yeshua on that cross no matter what day it was. And so when Yeshua is on the cross, and it is a, uh, it is a festival Shabbat, that's perfectly fine. They're not going to leave him hang on the cross, okay, uh, without burying him. They're going to bury him before the weekly Shabbat, okay? They're not going to cause a breaking of the two, right? The Romans put Yeshua on the cross, and yes, it was a festival Shabbat. It was Nisan 15, and so they are going to bury him according to Deuteronomy 21, where you need to be buried the same day, and so this is very important. That command is higher than keeping Shabbat. OK, they're going to get that body in to the ground so that it doesn't carry over into the weekly Shabbat. So verse 22 here in Deuteronomy, Davarim, chapter 21 states, suppose a man is guilty of a sin with a death sentence and he is put to the death and you hang him on a tree. His body is not to remain all night on the tree. Instead, you must certainly bury him the same day for anyone hanged is a curse of God. You must not defile your land that Yahweh, your God, is giving you as an inheritance. And so this is why the man Yosef goes to Pilate and he wants to get that body and bury it the same day. He's trying to, of course, uphold to this scripture. All right. And this trumps the Shabbat, okay, by saying, oh, we can't work on Shabbat. No, the body has to get into the ground. No different than when it comes to circumcising the child on the eighth day. Didn't matter if it was a Shabbat, you would circumcise that child on the eighth day. Okay, you would break the Shabbat in a sense in order to fulfill that command. So that's also very important because that question comes up. So there is no problem with burying him. Of course, they want to get him in the ground before the weekly Shabbat, okay, according to the Friday crucifixion here. Now, the first passage that we want to talk about is in Matthew chapter 27, starting with verse 57. It says, now when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Yosef, who had also become a disciple of Yeshua. This man went to Pilate and asked for Yeshua's body. Then Pilate ordered it to be given, and Yosef took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And he laid it in his own tomb, which he had cut in the rock. Then he rolled a large stone up to the door of the tomb and went away. Now Miriam from Magdala was there and the other Miriam sitting opposite the tomb. 
right? We're reading this passage because we're getting the timing down. We're also seeing the women are following this man, Yosef, to see where they are laying their savior, Yeshua. And so then it says in verse 62, now on the next day, which is after the preparation, okay, this is Friday, okay? It was a festival Shabbat. It was Friday, the day of preparation. The Greek word there is the Greek word for Friday. It says the ruling Kohanim and the Parashim were gathered before Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember how that deceiver said while he was still alive, after three days, I'm to be raised. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, so his disciples do not come and steal him away. So again, Friday, any portion of a day, they, they had him put to death on a Friday. That's day one. They're going to Pilate on day two because they know the next day he's going to supposedly be risen. I mean, that was the prophecy, right? So yes, they are going to him on a Shabbat, a weekly Shabbat, because they are concerned that what might happen, okay, would stir up the people that this, you know, they think it's a great deception. It'll be worse than the first, okay? So yes, he died on a Friday. Then you have Shabbat, and then after the third day, which means when the third day begins, he will arise. So have it secure until the third day. That means the first day of the week, they want it secure that entire time. Once that passes, they know that the prophecy was he wasn't going to rise on the fourth day, right? So no problem there. So yes, here they are. It's the weekly Shabbat, okay? It's the day after preparation. And how do we know that and that it's not the festival Shabbat uh, that they're going before Pilate? We know that because of the next verse. In Matthew 28, verse 1, now after Shabbat, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Miriam of Magdala and the other Miriam came to look at the tomb. See how this flows very nicely? Okay, it's the day after Shabbat. I'm sorry, it's the day after preparation. That's a Friday, so that means it is Shabbat. And now, after Shabbat began the first day of the week, flows very nicely this way. Remember, chapters and verses were not there in the first century. This would have all flowed together. So there's no indication of a weekly uh, festival Shabbat or a weekly festival preparation day. Preparation is Friday, okay? So again, the women are there, okay? They're watching his body being put into the tomb, okay? This is Friday, which is Nisan 15, which is a festival Shabbat, but we're talking now about the weekly Shabbat when we get right here. After Shabbat, it began to dawn on the first day of the week. So, yes. All right, let's continue. We're going to go to Yochanan, John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42 says, after these things, Yosef of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take Yeshua's body away. Yosef was a disciple of Yeshua, but secretly for fear of the Judean leaders. Pilate gave permission, so Yosef came and took the body away. Nicodemus, who had first visited Yeshua at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds. Okay, so here we go. They are bringing spices. Right? We're getting an added person now to the story. Nicodemus is here, and they're preparing Yeshua's body. They're wrapping it in linen and putting 100 pounds of spices on there. Verse 40, then they took the body of Yeshua and wrapped it in linen with spices, as is the Jewish burial custom. All right. Now, in the place where he was executed, there was a garden. Uh, in the garden was a new tomb where no one had been buried because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby. They laid Yeshua there. The day of preparation, it is Friday. Okay, Yeshua died on a Friday. And so they're adhering to Deuteronomy chapter 21 and getting his body in the tomb before sundown because the next day is also the weekly Shabbat. Okay, so they have wrapped him, his body and prepared spices with it. So then it says, early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it is still dark, Miriam from Magdala comes to the tomb. She sees that the stone has been rolled away from the tomb. So she comes running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Yeshua loved. 
she tells them they've taken the master out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So notice again, the nice flow in John. It's the Jewish day of preparation. It is Friday and the tomb was nearby. They laid him there early in the morning on the first day of the week. Okay, you've got Friday, you got Shabbat, and now you got the first day of the week. Very easy, very nice flow. Yeshua died on a Friday. All right, in Luke chapter 23, verses 50 through 56. Now there was a man named Yosef, a council member and a good righteous man. He had not been in agreement with the council and their action. He was from the Judean town of Arimathea and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for Yeshua's body and he took it down, wrapped it in linen and laid him in a tomb cut out of the rock where no one ever had been laid. So remember Nicodemus was there. They had a hundred pounds of spices when they were doing this and they were getting him in the grave before the weekly Shabbat began, before sundown, okay? Now it was the day of preparation and Shabbat was approaching, okay? It was Friday and the weekly Shabbat is approaching. The women who had come with him, meaning who? Yeshua, from the Galilee followed and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They watched the men do what they were doing. They returned and prepared spices and perfumes, but on Shabbat, they rested according to the command, All right? So it says they returned and prepared spices. So after this is all done, of course, Shabbat is approaching. So when they go home, they're not going to prepare spices right away. What does it say? They rested on Shabbat. So they're not going to prepare the spices until when? Shabbat is over. All right. The Greek word here is kai. And sometimes you'll see an interpretation where it says, and on Shabbat, they rested according to the command. All right. That doesn't follow the flow of scripture. All right. Because it's already what? It's already becoming Shabbat. So they're not going to go home and prepare because the body was laid in the tomb right before Shabbat began. So by the time they get home, it's going to be a Shabbat, whether you think it's the festival Shabbat or the weekly Shabbat. So we know that this term here, then they return and prepared spices, doesn't happen until after Shabbat is over, which is why it says, but on Shabbat, they rested. It's just letting you know they rested on Shabbat before they prepared the spices. Okay, and so when are they going to prepare the spices? Let's find out. So, so we have Shabbat is rested. So, okay, let's first. So it is the day of preparation and Shabbat is approaching. This is Friday. Okay, and the weekly Shabbat is approaching. So this Shabbat here is the weekly Shabbat, but they rested on Shabbat. This is the weekly Shabbat, okay? And then it goes on. Now on the first day of the week at daybreak, the women came to the tomb carrying the spices that they prepared, okay? So some people are gonna say, okay, but when did they prepare the spices? If they didn't go home right away and prepare the spices, but they went home, rested on Shabbat, and then prepared the spices after that, that's very simple. On Friday evening, okay, once Shabbat is over, they can go ahead and begin to prepare the spices. They can prepare it Friday evening, get the spices prepared, okay? And then the next morning, of course, it's dark out, right? So the next morning, they're going to get there when, as it's becoming light. They're going to bring the spices with them. So there is no problem. After Saturday night, when Shabbat is over, okay, it's the it's beginning of Saturday night or it's the beginning of the first day of the week, which also happens, what, on Saturday night. Okay, that's when they can prepare the spices and bring that to the tomb. So we see them bringing the spices to the tomb on the first day of the week. This all flows with a Friday, meaning the day of preparation. Okay, now the problem with the Wednesday crucifixion is they try to say that the women on Nisan 14, let me go ahead and take you to the chart. This will be easier. Let's go to the chart. And I'll show you why a Wednesday crucifixion still doesn't work. All right, according to the Wednesday crucifixion theory, they would have 
All right, Yeshua being put in the grave on day four. All right, because they're trying to get him in the grave before the festival Shabbat is what they say. So you have the women watching where the body is being laid, and then they're going to go home and prepare the spices. Okay, and then on day five, which is a uh, festival Shabbat for them, they're going to say, "Oh, they rested," and then they're going to come uh, on day six. Okay, which is a Friday. Okay. This is where they can, um, you know, go buy spices, prepare spices, all of that. Well, number one, if they're going to do all that, then they're going to go to the tomb and go ahead and put it on Yeshua. They're not going to wait till the first day of the week. So again, the Thursday and Wednesday theory just does not work. Okay. The Wednesday theory, especially the Wednesday crucifixion does not work when we're looking at the women with the spices. All right. Because then they would have full opportunity on Friday to bring the spices they prepared. Okay, they're not going to wait till the first day of the week. They're going to go on a Friday there because according to their theory a Friday, that's just a regular day, right? It's not a Shabbat day. Because for them, the festival Shabbat lands on day five. And then you got the weekly Shabbat, of course, on day, um, on day seven. So that leaves day six wide open. They can buy spices, prepare spices, get them to the tomb and finish the job. So again, doesn't flow with scripture. So another reason why the Wednesday crucifixion does not work. Let's continue though, there's more. All right, so again, Verse 54, now it was the day of preparation and Shabbat was approaching. This is Friday. Weekly Shabbat is approaching. Okay. They watch where the body is laid. Okay. They return to prepare spices, but they don't do it right away because on Shabbat, they're going to rest. But that's their, that's their idea is, hey, we're going to go and prepare spices. Okay. Now, again, this word kai is better translated as but. Okay. Some of your translations are going to say and on Shabbat they rested. And that's why people have a tendency to think, oh, they ran home and began to prepare spices. No, because by the time they get home, it's already Shabbat. The body's been laid and Shabbat has approached. And according to the Wednesday crucifixion people theory, they're going to be eating their, their Seder meal. Okay. And so they're not going to go home and prepare spices and then eat the Seder meal. Right. They're preparing to do the Seder meal at that time. So there's a lot of confusion with the Wednesday crucifixion. As you can see, there's a lot of problems. So day of preparation, Friday, Shabbat, weekly Shabbat. And then, of course, now on the first day of the week, it flows much easier. At daybreak, the women came to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They prepared it when? After Shabbat ended the night before. So Saturday night occurs. Okay, Shabbat is over. They prepare the spices. Now they're ready for the next morning. Let's go on. Mark chapter 15. It says, Pilate, starting with verse 44, Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. He's being told Yeshua is dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Yeshua had been dead for long. When Pilate learned this from the centurion, he granted the body to Yosef. Yosef uh, bought a linen cloth, took him down, wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in the tomb that he had been cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Again, if he bought a linen cloth that day and it was a Shabbat, it doesn't matter. Getting the body in the ground that day is more important than Shabbat. So he could have gone to a neighbor, he could have gone uh, to a house or gone to somewhere where someone could have sold him that linen cloth because it's the greater command, okay? And a Jew would have understood that. We're trying to get this man buried here. They understand that's the greater command. You go ahead and do it, all right? Yosef is a follower of Yeshua. To do good on a Shabbat is permitted, okay? He is a disciple of Yeshua. So this does not pose any problem whatsoever. Because some people are like, oh, he went and spent money on Shabbat. He wouldn't break Shabbat. Yes, to get the body in the ground. Yes, you would. Okay. All right. So it says he laid him in the tomb that had been cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Miriam and Mag 
Dala and Miriam, the mother of Yosef, were watching where Yeshua's body was placed. All right, it says, when Shabbat was over, Miriam of Magdala, Miriam, the mother of Yaakov, and Salome bought spices so that they might come and anoint Yeshua's body. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they come to the tomb. Notice how this constantly flows through all scripture. This is the weekly Shabbat. Okay, this is not the festival Shabbat. If the, if the festival Shabbat ends, okay, and they go and buy spices and they prepare it, and you believe in a Wednesday crucifixion, now this is Friday, they're going to go ahead and prepare it and what? Bring it to the tomb. Okay, they didn't do that. They, this says the first day of the week they came. So yes, this is the weekly Shabbat. After the weekly Shabbat is over, yes, you can spend money. Yes, you can go to the shops. You can go to a neighbor. You can do it. It doesn't say what they did or who they bought it from. But this is easily done after Shabbat is over. After Shabbat is over, you can start cooking. You know, they would have a love feast. Uh, you see that in Jude, in the first chapter of Jude, the, the believers in Yeshua would have a love feast there. That would happen after Shabbat is over. We have uh, Paul uh, preaching, you know, till midnight one time after Shabbat was over, okay? And so there's a lot of activity that goes on once Shabbat is over in the Jewish community. They weren't allowed to do anything, work or cook or anything. So yes, the shops are going to open. You can go buy something from a neighbor whatever. So buying the spices after Shabbat is over, no problem. They prepare the spices that night. On the first day of the week, they come that morning with the spices they prepare. They're going to come right away. Once the spices are bought and prepared, the next day they're coming. All right. That's their savior that they're, we're talking about. And they want a proper burial for their savior. And so they're going to make sure it's done, done right. So verse two, very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they come to the tomb. So yes, the spices um, being prepared by the women, being bought, all of that shows a Friday crucifixion. It all, it really causes problems for the Wednesday and Thursday crucifixion people, right? Not so much the Thursday crucifixion, but the Wednesday crucifixion for, for sure. Okay, the Thursday crucifixion, you've got a lot of other issues that we ran into and that we covered in the in the video series. But if you are a person that holds to a Wednesday crucifixion, the buying of the spices, the preparing of the spices, all of that coming on the first day of the week, all right, proposes many problems for you. So yes, a Friday crucifixion flows very nicely. Amen. And so I hope this answers many of the questions. This is my perspective and my point of view. Yes, Yeshua died on a Friday and he rose on the first day of the week as the scriptures teach, amen. And so until we meet again, everyone, shalom.